Hi, I'm Linda Cately. Today I'm going to show you a cool new tool I found. Um, it's how to create your own time machine using ZFS on FreeNAS and we should be able to do this in less than 10 minutes. Just a little background, I love my time machines. They uh, sit on my network, my all my Macs automatically back up to that. I can pull forward files that I need uh, if I want an older version. I also love ZFS. ZFS is an open source file system that has a lot of enterprise grade features and functionalities built into it. Things like I can grow it easily, I can add additional disks when needed, I can add RAID capabilities, I can have some redundancy built in, and a number of other enterprise grade capabilities. My time machine is closed, so I can't really put, I can't add disk to it. If I need to get a new one, I have to buy a new one, right? If I want more space or if I want to keep more versions of my files for longer periods of time, I, I can't do anything to the time machine that I have. Me, I've worked with ZFS for the last, for about the last 10 years. ZFS, I think, is perfect for Time Machine. When I recently ran into FreeNAS, I found that I could have the best of both worlds. So let's start off with the hardware that I'm using. I just had uh, some spare parts around my office. I had a broken laptop. I have uh, 13 year old twin boys and they uh, I gave them a laptop and within I think it was a week they broke the monitor on it. So it's not, the computer, the core part of it is all fine and ready to go. I just can't see the screen. So it wasn't really good for running any kind of Windows um, operating system on it. So it was just sitting there. I then found some really cheap USB drives, really cheap USB drives. Um, and because they're so cheap, I want to mirror them. And that way, if there's a failure on one of the drives, the other drive can take over until I can get a replacement drive. And I, I want to do this because they were so cheap. I want to make sure that uh, I have full reliability. Also, using ZFS, it has the checksums built into it so that I know that if I'm writing data out to these cheap drives, I know that when I read it back in, if it finds something, if they find a problem, a bad block, something, ZFS will automatically go to the other drive and find a piece of data that has a good checksum on it. So with ZFS and the cheap drives. So then in preparation for this, I downloaded the most recent stable version off of the freenas.org website. Uh, my download took me about two minutes, burnt to DVD took me a couple minutes, and then I did the installation. I accepted all the defaults on the installation, um, except for one. I put the... OS disk on the internal drive because I want to leave all my USB ports open for adding more disk as I need to as as time goes on. So my total prep time was 7 minutes and 22 seconds. Now as I show you how to do this you'll see that you can do the setup, the rest of the setup in less than a minute. Um, I'm going to take a little bit more time than that but we'll start the clock and show you how to do this. I should be able to set it up though with you watching in less than 10 minutes. So I've got my timer started. Now at the end of the installation for FreeNAS, it will show you an IP address that you can use in a browser on any system on your network to access the FreeNAS GUI. It'll have you set what's called a root password, a password that gives you administrative access to this box. It doesn't set anything by default. You set it and you use that password to log in. Now, once I log in, the first thing that I'm going to want to do for this setup is add a user it will automatically increment the, the next available user ID. I'm going to create a user called Backup. You can, you can use any username you want here. I'm just for this process going to use one called Backup. I'm going to use one of the built-in groups for it to belong to, but you can call this anything that you want to call it. Um, here I have to add some information on full name 
it's my backup user and then enter an email address I'm just going to use one that's available for my company and then a password for this for this case I'm just going to use backup as my password I don't think anybody's going to sneak into my internal network at for my systems but you should pick a password that is difficult to guess so the next thing I'm going to do, I have my user created here. You see backups created. The next thing I am going to do is carve out the storage. I'm going to use the ZFS Volume Manager. So I clicked on Storage. I'm going to click on the ZFS Volume Manager. The name of this volume can be anything. I'm just going to use my name, Kately, and it automatically looked at the available disks here. If I click on this plus sign, it'll show me that it automatically created the optimal configuration for me. It created a mirror of those two USB drives. Now I can add an extra device. I could stripe these. I could change this into a striped format where I have no redundancy. Um, and there's a number of other options. So I'm going to click on Add Volume. The free NAS tool now is going to create that volume. It's also going to create a, what's called a data set and it's going to mount this on a mount point of slash right over here slash MNT slash Kately. Now the next thing I'm going to do is change permissions on this. I'm going to have this owned by my user that I just created, the, the backup user and the group staff. I'm going to open up my permissions a little bit here and I'm going to make sure that these permissions are set recursively. And my volume's ready to go. It's ready to write, ready to go. Now the next thing I'm going to do, so I've created my volume, created my data set, and now I'm going to share this. Now I can share this in a number of different ways, but I'm going to share this using the Apple Share Protocol. I have to give this a name, so I'm going to call it my Time Mac. I can put a comment in here, and then I browse my available paths. So I have MNT Kately. This is the one I'm going to use. Now here's the the magic secret sauce here is I just click on make this a time machine. It does warn me to not do this on more than one volume on my on my machine um, so that it doesn't get confused. I'm going to open up my permission sets here a little bit more, my write permissions, and say OK. Now as soon as I say OK, if I look here on this Mac and I open my time machine preferences, I go into select, select a backup disk, there it is, ready to go, use this disk. Now once I say use this disk, I need to enter in the username and password of the user I set up to connect, who owns this, and it's ready to go. My next backup will be in 116 seconds. We see here my time. I'm under five minutes here. Uh, if I wasn't talking to you, I probably could have set that up a whole lot quicker. But it's ready to go. Just a couple more things. Some of the benefits of doing this is that I can now grow this. If I want to add additional disks, if I start running out of space, I can add more disks. I can add more USB drives. I also, if I, if I want to, if I want to turn this into a server, I can export and import these drives so that I can move these to different places. So I can move out that that broken laptop to more current hardware or to a server or to some other system. Um, I can upgrade the hardware and software um, by using those external drives. I can export my drives. I can upgrade my software and import those back in again. Some of the other great enterprise quality tools, again I've talked about 
checksums, but I have the ability to take snapshots. So I can take point in time snapshots, hundreds of them. I could actually take uh, point in time snapshots and share those snapshots out to other users on my network. I have other enterprise grade tools like encryption and, and compression. Just a little bit about Kately Company. We offer live online classes offered weekly. Um, I have a number of classes on ZFS. If you want to know more about ZFS, sign up for one of my classes. They're very inexpensive. All the classes are under three hours, and we've recently added the ZFS Bootcamp to show you how to use ZFS with FreeNAS. Also offer a number of classes on Solaris. Find us at kateleyco.com. If you have any questions, love to hear from you, Linda at KateleyCo.com, or I'm always on Skype, Kately Co. Thanks for your time.